Hey, it's Joe Glanish, Automator, and uh, we had a really busy week this week. Uh, the guys were back from their break, and uh, we're going to cover what we automated this week without a hotkey. So let's jump into it. Let me uh, bring up Prompt Assistant. And let's see, under my tools, recently modified files. You know what, just because I have a hotkey for it, if I can remember the hotkey, let's see, WinPen1. We'll jump up the DPI. That's one of our scripts. Uh, you can have a hotkey assigned to wherever the mouse is over to automatically adjust the DPI. So it makes it much easier for people to see, uh, especially in recording. So anyway, um, email. So here's some client work we did for AJ. Uh, it was really cool. So Cl AJ reached out, and he goes into LinkedIn and ads and often has a big selection of... He is selecting certain ad campaigns and then has to write emails about which ones he selected and gets a list. And, and it takes him, he, he, this one email he said, it took him about 25 minutes, I think he said, to write. And we basically now have it where it comes up, he clicks a couple buttons for the ones he wants, hits a hotkey, and it does it in the millisecond, right? It's so fast. So very, very cool. Saves him a lot of time. Um, so that was a great one. We also... Because he had time frames that he usually adjusts for, um, he has a, a naming convention for hours of the day or a week and stuff. And we build him a couple hotkeys instead of freehand typing them. It just dumps in like today in a certain time code or yesterday in a certain time code. So it made it very fast and easy for him to, to hit a hotkey and have those look at his split. So those are really cool. Um, this is like, actually with AJ, he's like, hey, Joe, do you have any scripts where it'll, you hit a hotkey and it mutes the mic? And I'm like, we do. Um, our, this device mute, because we first called it mic mute, but we realized what would be really cool is if you could hit a hotkey and one hotkey will mute your mic, your system mic, one will mute your speakers, and another one will mute both if you want. That way, if someone walks into the room and you're on a Zoom call with a bunch of people and you just want to you know, mute everybody, the speakers, your speakers so you don't hear them and your mic you can hit a hotkey and just toggle it really quickly right so um, i gave him that one we actually identified a bug and uh gave it back to him that's why that's in here it's being updated um yep so this video reducer let me fire it up real quickly this is going to open the folder um this is the script now what you do is you drag videos, you can drag videos on here or a folder and it will loop over them. We have um, preferences that you can set and it will remember this so the next time you come in and we have some tooltips. Oh good, Irfan added the tooltips, he was working on that. Um, this usually I have as underscore PRC. Um, and you can change the resolution. It's kind of like Handbrake but much, much simpler, right? Because Often we want to convert stuff in after our Zoom calls. I'll go to convert um, our, our hero calls. We'll have hour-long calls, and I store them all on my hard drive, but it shrinks the file size down to be a very tiny size compared to, compared to what they originally were. Often it's like a tenth, which is crazy. Uh, but um, sometimes, it depends on the video, sometimes it's in half, but this H265 is a really good compression one. The, the diff only bummer is not all tools have, uh, not all players media players have the h265 encoding so vlc does and several other honeypot is that what's called there's another big one does but the windows media player doesn't by default so it's kind of annoying in that sense but um yeah i i love the smaller file size um this video effortless producer yeah we had different versions of it in v1 and we converted it to v2 so now it's done in v2 so we'll be and that one's really really close to being released we'll release that probably next week if not the week after um I mentioned it to Rizwan. We had some that actually flipped the video. So sometimes you get a video and it's upside down or something, and it's not easy to do. So we have a tool that uses FFmpeg that'll flip that. Um, and this Ripper, it's really cool also. I'll, let me. Oh, this is the V1 version. Let's go to the V2 version. So those are opening, of course, on the other page, but I'm, I'm going to run it. Now this, you drag either a video or an audio file... Um, and you can select files or folders as well, but you can convert it to whatever bitness um, you want and, and append to it because it saves them in the same folder. It converts them to MP3. So even if you had like a 320K uh, MP3 file, but you wanted it to be 32K to save file size, right? You can still convert this MP3 to MP3, right? It'll work. Uh, but it's very cool, very simple, um, and, and FFmpeg is just an amazing tool. So that's another one, hopefully later this week, we'll have out. Those will be paid tools, but like five bucks or so, somewhere around there. 
Um, we're working on a tool to help make GUIs resizable. Like you use a smart GUI creator and they give you the static locations and our tool is going to help make them where they're relative. So they, they update much better. And that one's not quite ready to be shown. We demonstrated it during the hero call. Um, and it just opened up a lot more questions of what we're going to have to do to, to help people. But it, it will be nice once it's ready. Um, that'll be some time. Um, apparently someone updated the notify classes. Our notify function class, it, it's amazing. If you want to have simple notifications on your screen or on different screens, that's one of the ones. Um, I, I mentioned it on Saturday to Irfan and Rizwan. I'm like, hey, I used to have a script where I could click and it would throw my window to an alternate window uh, monitor. So it takes it from whatever monitor you're on and toggles it between two monitors. And so we're gonna use our notify class to first let people say, okay, here here's your monitor one, two, and three, as far as auto hockey sees them, because it's actually different than how Windows sees them. But we're just gonna display a big GUI on them and say, here's number one, two, and three, which ones do you wanna to toggle between? You can pick two. So you can pick one and three, or three and one, and two and three, or whatever you want, right? When you do that, then you can, um, you'll have a hotkey you select that when you click on a window, it will throw it to that other window. And it's it's super, super cool. I used to use it all the time um, in V1, so we're having a V2 version. Uh, that one it might be available next week, maybe the week after, but it's going to be a really good one. But we, we used our Notify class in that to show, because we can display them on different monitors, um, to show the notifications that where the GUIs are. Um, oh, Irfan apparently was doing something with Rafadium. That's If you have a need for a more robust web scraping project it's great it's just the biggest pet peeve there's two is you have to be able to download drivers and executable files and the second one is you have to be okay with like shutting down your browser and starting it from scratch because it needs to be run where it's like in debug mode so to speak and then we can control it but it's it's for far more robust stuff during the hero call we actually demonstrated using auto control which is not on this list but we demonstrated how we used auto control uh, often this i actually added the the hotkeys to here because i wanted the auto hotkey to trigger the keys but i wanted the stuff built into auto control which is a chrome extension for doing browser automation which if you're doing something um it's it's very handy because you can inject javascript directly to your dom very simply and you can add hotkeys to it to trigger. It's just I didn't want it always running. I wanted it where it only happened at certain times when I hit my browser back and browser forward button. And so I put my hotkeys in auto hotkey to send like the F14 and F15 key. And then in auto control, I use the F14 and F15 as the triggers to do the JavaScript injection. So uh, we covered that in the hero call. Um, yeah, the discount list. Um, search and replace, that's where I added those hotkeys. This... Quick converter. Someone wrote me and said, "Hey, this quick converter, is it a static snapshot of the the big version of the the V1 to V2 converter, which converts the entire file?" Um, and he's like, "Or does it get auto updated?" I'm like, "No, it, and we haven't updated in a while." So I asked Irfan to go download the current version and then update our tool, which is that's what it's based off of. But yeah, it's not um, a dynamically updated thing. That would take a lot of time and work to to do. And this is just, it's a one-off tool, but it's very handy because if you're starting to learn V2, you can select code, hit a hotkey, and it will show you the equivalent in V2 if the, the script can convert it. Um, this, this is the script we just ran. This is this script right here. I realized last week, I'm like, man, I thought we worked more. I think it was 11 files. Um, and after I ran it, I went back and looked, and I'm like, I had gone back seven days. I'm sorry, I went back six days, not seven days, which is why Monday was left out because... Last week, Irfan and Rizwan worked Monday, but not the rest of the week. And because I was ran it, I said, look back six days. It didn't get Monday because today's Sunday. You know, anyway, so it was funny. That's why I had to change it to say, look back seven days. Um, so that way, uh, next time, I won't have that happen. This regex tester, I don't think we actually did. Maybe Irfan did a little work on it, but we're building a tool to help spot and highlight your regular expression stuff. And Isaiah, I was just talking to him. He's working again today on Sunday. And uh, he is working on a regex course so we're building an auto hotkey which really on regex but we'll have a little bit of auto hockey stuff but of course it's it's really on regex when you're using regular expressions on auto hockey you're using regular expression so that's what the course is on but yeah that should be done let's say in a couple weeks probably because you know with the client calls and everything it gets hard to to actually get stuff done um, and we've been really busy with client calls and consultations and things and done for you services which we do do if you're interested um this PDF, so 
I think Irfan was demonstrating some of the converting um, a tool. And we had a call with, was it Steve, uh, a buddy of mine. We're doing some client work for him. And the PDF to text is a great free tool that you can download. There's another one called, I think, Ghost Script that will take a PDF and extract the text from it. So we were demonstrating those. Um, the stopwatch, it's another one. Let me let me go ahead and launch it. This is a V1 version, uh, and it'll pull up in this screen. Um, and it's nice having a simple start, and it's just going to count and then stop, and I can reset, right? When During the hero call, I mentioned to Zayas, you know be cool? What if we had, like, at the top of this criteria of a drop-down that says, what if you want to wait? I want it auto-triggered to start or auto-triggered to end when, like, either a window exists or uh, an EXE exists, right? Because that that's usually when we're doing this kind of stuff, we build it into the program. But I'm like, hey, this would be really cool. We could have a couple drop-downs to say, when this thing happens, start, and when it stops, and have it on a very short, short set timer, which will be very responsive, um, and just make it very simple. So when you're trying to calculate the differences, because on the FFmpeg converter tool, we have it all done in V1. Irfan asked if we could convert it to V2, and he found some libraries that really helped with this. I said, that's fine. But we were testing the speed of how fast it would process a, v, um, a one hour video between the V1 and the V2 version. Well, um, I just hit, I, I, I started the process and then hit start and, and it took, what was that one? No, it, it, anyway, it doesn't matter. It took a certain amount of time and they basically tied, but I'm like, why don't we have it watching for if FFmpeg exists? If FFmpeg is a running process, auto start, and when it disappears, end. Right, And that way we wouldn't actually have to have any coding going on for that test. We'll just have some options for what you can select from and have that built into our stopwatch. So this tool right here will be converted to V2, but I think we're going to look into adding those other things I, I mentioned um, also. Oh, and, okay. Get all, so in Telegram, we had some um, a condition come up where a, a hero member thought I was being rude because I replied to him, hey, FYI, you could you could have figured this out yourself if you had added something to the cart and looked at the in your checkout. Um, I, I, I didn't mean it as rude. I just was, one, in a hurry, and two, I just said, FYI, you can figure it. Anyway, he got bent out of shape, man, whatever, said I was rude and a jerk and whatever, which, fine, you know, I'm fine. He just he, he decided to leave, which is more than I'm more than happy for him. Hope he does well. But um, what we needed, what we started realizing was we need to create a, a way to identify everyone in Telegram and who they are, and in the Zoom calls and who they are, and keeping track of all of our users. So if you guys have any sort of a user group like we're doing and want to track this stuff, let us know because we're build we're developing some tools that will help in that process. Um, and using Telegram, actually, I, I met to Zayas and I were talking earlier. I saw. The FBI was like interviewing the or talking to the Telegram designer because it's a very private tool. And uh, anyway, Telegram's a really, really cool tool, but um, it is very private. So it's a good one to be familiar with if you're interested. Um, oh, look, Isaiah actually made. So I have a hotkey that I can press and it will say, it will send in Telegram to our auto hero, auto, I'm sorry, automators, me, Isaiah, Urfi, and Rizwan. It sends a message saying Joe stepped away. And I told him, because sometimes we're on a call and Irfan or someone will have to step away and they have to interrupt us to tell us they're stepping away. And I said, you should have a button. You just click and you don't have to say in a word and it just automatically posts to our group, hey, such and such stepped away. So it looks like this, I can see, it looks like Isaiah's created that button for himself. So um, that's what we're doing there. This is that toggle between monitors. So there's the V1 and we're working on the V2 version. Like I said, that's a really cool one. Irfan did, we did update Ultimate Spy. It had to do with the closing time between when you were running on a slower computer and you'd switch between the inspection tools. If it took too long, it thought it actually closed um, and would exit. So Irfan made that update. Um, I'm not sure if there's other updates on that, but I know that one was one of them. And then we were trying to do FTP transfers, and I'll explain that one a bit more later of the, the real goal from this um, and how we're doing it, I'll demo it. but. Uh, we were working with the com object and it used a DLL file and it said it would access with the com object, but 
what we finally realized was Irfan's computer had some weirdness with its uh, SFTP transfers and it was blocking certain IP addresses or whatever. But So I don't think we're going to end up using WinSCP, which is like FileZilla. Uh, but there was uh, one example in the script of an old example how he automated WinSCP. And so uh, we looked at it, but I don't think we're actually going to make a video on that. But these are the 46 files we automated in the last week without a hotkey this week. Um, if you want to be the 47th one, let us know, because we, we do done for you work. Or, and, and I was having a call this morning with um, Scott, who's a hero member, and a couple other hero members where we're going to be doing a, a, a different rate for doing tutorials and coaching with Irfan, because he's leveled up a lot, and he's ready um, for prime time, but he's still not quite at his ASIS level, so it'll be a discounted rate. Um, I forget the actual dollar value. I think it's 50 bucks an hour, but Hero Members, it drops it down to 40 Or no, no, it's 40 drops it down to 30 So it's $40 an hour for coaching with Irfian to set it up. Um, and it's not done for you work, right? But that is, if you're wanting to learn something and you're having trouble with something, you can get on a call. And what I would recommend is doing it once a week or every other week, have a one-hour session where you learn a given topic. And that's how I can tell you over the years of working with Isaiah's and Maestrieth uh, and, and Irfan now too. I learned from him because he's surpassed me as far as programming and working in objects and stuff. And it's amazing when you talk to other people and you, especially you bring your project you're working on and they help you, you know, make it more um, either, if you want, sophisticated. That's not always the answer. Structured is probably a better way that often happens is just the... because. Most of us aren't really programmers, right? And when you see someone that knows what they're doing, working with objects or functions, they can really organize your code in a much better way, and that's what these calls are for. So let me know if you're interested in that. Anyway, please like the video. If you learned something, it really helped us out. And like I said, I think we just got past 10,000 subscribers, so um, be one of those 10,000. Cheers.